Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi Mathematics and today we have a really great challenge x to the 6th power equal to x minus 6 all raised to the 6th power. Right now let's solve this challenge because a lot of students say that okay mister this is like the easiest challenge we can also uh, apply this 6 root on both sides and as a result we have our root but in mass it's not works like that we need to find a great approach how can we solve this challenge and in this video I'm going to show you this this approach. First of all let's bring this uh, x minus 6 to the 6th power let's bring from our right side to left side let's do this. So what do we have right here? We have x, x to the 6th power minus this parenthesis, x minus 6 to the 6th power equal to equal to 0. Right now, uh, let's write this x to the 6th power. So instead of this x to the 6th power, let's write x cubed to the 2nd power. Okay, so as a result, we have right here x cubed to the 2nd power as a result from instead of this one and instead of this parenthesis let's do absolutely the same thing so as a result we have parentheses right here we have x minus 6 parentheses and right here we have 3 and all raised to the second power so it changed nothing basically because if we read this we have absolutely the same expression so basically it changed it changed nothing for us yeah but in the result we have right here difference of two squares we have right here this is our first a for example this is our a square for example, this is our a, as a result, we have a square minus, we have right here this expression, for example, this is our b. So as a result, we have a square minus b square, and everyone knows this identity formula equal to a plus b, a plus b, and times a minus b. So right now, let's apply this formula right here. Let's apply this formula in this, in this parenthesis. So as a result, uh, let's start with addition. So we have x cubed plus this parenthesis. So let's start, uh, let's solve this challenge like that. Right here we have first parenthesis, we have right here x cubed plus x minus 6. We have right here a cube, yeah? And parenthesis and another parenthesis, x cubed minus x minus 6. We have right here a cube equal to 0. So really great. Right now, if we look closely, we have a product of two parentheses, first parentheses and the second parenthesis. So it means that first parenthesis is equal to 0 or the second parenthesis is equal to 0. Okay, so right now let's try to look at our parentheses. What do we have right here? In the first parenthesis, we have a thumb of two cubes. Right now, let's remember a formula. Let's remember a formula from here like, like that. So a cube plus b cube. Okay, let's remember this formula equal to a plus b. Yeah, a plus b and times another parenthesis, a square minus ab and plus b square. And right now the second parenthesis, we have a difference of two cubes. So right now we need to know about the second formula. So we have a cube minus b cube equal to a minus b and times a square plus ab and plus b square. So this is two formulas, this one, we really need this formula. And this one, we also need this formula right here. So this formula we apply right here, and this formula we apply right here on the left side. So let's do this right now. We have a long, a long parenthesis. So as a result, let's start, for example, from this side, because we have a long and complicated parenthesis. So with addition, we have on the left side from this parenthesis, we have right here, we have right here x, x plus x minus 6, times another parenthesis, we have right here x square minus x times x minus 6 plus x minus 6 x minus 6 we have right here square and it's not equal to 0 we have another parenthesis of so this product so we close this parenthesis and we have another parenthesis this one with the minus sign so let's also write this parenthesis right here as a result we have x minus x minus 6 yeah something like that x minus x minus 6 and another parenthesis, we have right here x square, x square plus x times x minus 6. As you can see, a long complicated parenthesis, yeah? And uh, we have right here plus x minus 6 square, so plus x minus 6, we have right here square, as you can see, very long and complicated parenthesis, but right now we're going to simplify this, so nothing, nothing hard for us, let's simplify this a little bit. So instead of this parenthesis, we have right here x plus x minus 6, we have right here 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6. Another parenthesis, we have right here x squared, so let's let's uh, raise this to the second power, let's uh, simplify this, so we have right here x squared minus x squared, yeah, minus x squared, and we have right here plus 6x, plus x square 
minus 12x, so this is our formula, yeah, x squared minus 12x, and plus 36. Really great, right here, what do we have? x minus x minus 6, we have right here minus minus, so as a result we have, we have only 6, yeah, we have right here only 6. And as a result, the last parenthesis, so right here 6, and our last parenthesis, this one complicated parentheses, x square plus x square, yeah, let's, let's, let's raise this, so we have right here x square plus x square, yeah, x square plus x square minus 6x, minus 6x, and the last step, this one, raised to the second power, so as a result we have plus x square minus 12x and plus 36, 36, equal to 0. Really great. A long and complicated parenthesis, but doesn't matter, we're going to simplify this. We'll just look at it. x square minus x square equal to zero. Right here we have only our x square, so as a result we have a really great expression on the left side. Very like simplified expression. So we have right here 2x minus 6. In the second parenthesis we have right here x square, 6x minus 12x. Uh, we have right here uh, 6x minus 12, we have minus 6x. So we have right here x square minus 6x and plus 36, really great. The next thing, we have 6, and the last parenthesis, let's look at it, what do we have right here, x square, x square, x square, so as a result we have 3x square, 3x square. The next, what do we have right here, minus 18x, minus 18x, and as a result with the constant we have plus 36 really great, equal to zero, and I wanted to separate, I want to split this, uh, separate this part with this one, because right now we are going to uh, look at this expression, so this is our final expression, we factor our challenge, we have first parenthesis, second parenthesis, and the third parenthesis, and basically we are going to find all of these roots right here, because we have a product, and product of uh, four parentheses is equal to zero, when the first parenthesis is equal to zero, or the second parenthesis is equal to zero, or the third one, or the fourth one, so let's start, for example, with with the first parenthesis, so we have 2x minus minus 6 equal to 0. So this is our first, like I want to split this, this part right here. So we have right here 2x minus 6 equal to 0. From here 2x equal to 6 and x first really great equal to equal to 3. So our x first equal to equal to 3. As you can see we find our first first solution, really great. Right now let's go to the next parenthesis, we have right here x square, yeah, we have right here x square minus 6x plus 36 equal to equal to 0. Right now let's solve this part, I want to split this this solution, yeah, we have right here something like that, and right now let's solve this, this quadratic equation, what do we have right here, our discriminant equal to b square minus 4ac, so as a result we have 36 minus 4 times 1 times 36, which is equal to, which is equal to 36 minus, right here we have, looks like 144, and as a result of a discriminant equal to minus 108. So as a result, we have right here our, our complex roots, but doesn't matter, let's find this, let's find this root right here, yeah, so we have right here x second and third equal to minus b plus minus square root of discriminant, all known formula, minus b plus minus square root of discriminant all over, all over to a, and let's plug in all of the thing into this into this spot. Equal to minus b6, we can read here 6, plus minus, square root of discriminant, square root of uh, minus 108, yeah, and all over to a, equal to all over, all over by 2. Right now, let's simplify a little bit our, our, um, our square root right here, because obviously I want to show you that 108, so let's, I want to show you this, for example, let's go right here, so 108, if we divide the thing right here by, by, by what, by 2, we have 54, if we divide by 2, we have, we have 27, if we divide by 3, we have right here 9, if we divide by 3, we have right here, we have right here 3, if we divide by 3, we have 1. So as a result, we can express this 108 as 2 square times 3 square and times 3, okay? So let's do this. So we have right here 6 plus minus, square root of, a long square root, so first of all we have minus 1, our complex unit, times, right here parenthesis of course, times 3, 3 square and times 3, times 3 square, times 3, and times 2 square, 2 square, and all over, all over 2. Really great, 
equal to, we have right here 6 plus minus, this is our complex unit, this is our i, times right here 2 times 3, so 2 times 3 equal to 6, we have right here 6, square root of 3, because we can't uh, like uh, take this uh, square root from this 3, we take this from this one, from this one, equal to 6, and as a result we have right here only square root of 3, and all over, right here we have, we have 2. And our last step, let's divide our numerator and denominator by 2. So as a result, our x second and third equal to 6 divided by 2 equal to 3. 3 plus minus, we have right here 3i square root of, of 3. This is our second and third root, as you can see, complex root, but doesn't matter. This is complex root, doesn't matter. Final step, our final equation, this one. This one equation, let's solve this. So we have right here 3x squared minus 18x plus 36 equal to 0. Right now let's divide uh, both sides by 3. We can easily do this. We can divide both sides by 3 because we can do this. 3, 18, 36 is divisible by 3. So we divide both sides by 3. As a result, we have x squared minus, we have right here 6x and plus Right here we have 12, yeah, 12 equal to 0. Right now let's find our discriminant, our discriminant equal to b square minus 4ac, which is equal to, we have right here minus 6 square, so minus 6 we have square, minus 4 times 1 times 12, which is equal to 36 minus uh, 36 minus 48, which is equal to minus 12. As a result right here we also have like a complex solution because our discriminant is negative. But doesn't matter, let's find this. So right here we had mm, second and third. As a result, right here we have fourth and fifth root equal to minus b. Minus b, where do we have minus b? We have right here, right here we have 6 plus minus square root of minus 12 and all over 2a, all over, all over 2. Let's simplify this a little bit. As a result, we can write it as this 12 as 4 times 3 and times minus 1. Let's do this. So equal to 6 plus minus square root of minus 1 times 4 and times 3 all over all over right here by 2 as a result 6 plus minus right here this is a complex unit this is our i and square root of 4 equal to equal to 2 yeah so times 2 and times uh, we still leave this square root of 3 like that because we can't uh, take this square root and all over all over 2 which is equal to, right now let's divide uh, with the same trick as before, let's divide our uh, numerator by 2, and uh, so both of these expressions by 2, we can do this because this is our common denominator, as a result we have 3 plus minus i square root of 3, really great, so as you can see we find our fourth and fifth root, so let's write our final answer, let's write our final answer right here, let's do this right now, a long, a long challenge, but we easily solve this, so our answer, our answer, x first equal to 3, x second right here, we, let's go with the plus sign, x second equal to 3 plus 3i square root of 3, x third with the minus sign, x3 equal to 3 minus 3i square root of 3, the fourth root, where do we have this for? Fourth and fifth root we have right here, so basically we have right here x fourth equal to 3 plus i square root of 3 and our fifth root x fifths equal to 3 minus i square root of 3. Basically this is a real root, a real number root, we can also check it right now and this is our complex complex root right here. We can also see a graph right now, we can also see a complex plane, you can also like see this in a geometric perspective, yeah, with the, with the, with the graphs right here, with the real number roots, and with the complex plane you can also see this from, from another perspective. So this is our answer, we can also check our, our three right here, maybe someone interested in this, in this solution, maybe someone like, don't trust me. We have in the beginning we have x to the sixth power equal to x minus six to the sixth power. Okay, and if you plug in right here 3, as a result we have 3 to the 6th power equal to 3 minus 6, we have minus 3, minus 3 to the 6th power. We have even power, so as a result 3 to the 6 equal to 3 to the 6, so this is, this is a great, a great root for us. This is for proof right here, maybe someone don't trust me, this is our, 
challenge. So I hope you understand my explanation. I hope you learned something new. Maybe a little bit complicated, but I wanted to explain this challenge uh, just for someone who like want to to learn something new. Uh, try to explain it step by step. Maybe a little bit slowly, but I I can't like jump from from expression to expression. So I don't like it. I don't like it very much when I jump from 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 the beginning to the end. I try to explain it step by step. And right here, as you can see, we have a long and complicated expression in this moment. So maybe you don't understand this step. But as a result, we have four parentheses. So this is absolutely the same thing as this one. And as a result, like that, I want to split this by, by parts, real numbers, complex number, two complex parts, and right here we have also two complex, complex solution. So we hope you understand this explanation. I hope you learned something new, but definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong. Write your thoughts down into the comment section. Write your suggestion down into the comment section. What do you think about, about this solution? I really want your, your response about it. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Have a great day. See you in the next videos.